stands for Collinear Resonance Ionization Spectroscopy and it's uh, an atomic technique, so it's interaction with, of lasers with exotic isotopes which allows us to study the properties of these isotopes and in particular its charge radius, its spin and its moments. So in one experiment we can measure four observables of exotic isotopes and what those observables, we can compare them to the predictions of models and so it's a very, very powerful tool to study exotic nuclei. The radioactive isotopes and then in particular the ones we have studied in this work uh, are produced by sending uh, a proton beam which we receive from CERN uh, booster, so the PS booster accelerator at an energy of 1.4 GeV. Uh, they are sent onto targets at Isolde, in which all kinds of radioactive isotopes are produced. So once we have produced the potassium isotopes, they are going through the mass separator and they are sent in the, the Chris beam line. We uh, overlap the isotopes with lasers. And the goal is that we uh, first uh, neutralize the ions that come in, so we have them in their atomic ground state. And then with lasers we can excite the atom and ionize it in a resonant way. And because this is uh, only happening for well-defined frequencies, the frequency at which the ionization takes place is what we are going to observe, because when it happens we will see an ion. Now, by detecting this ion and by changing the frequency of one of the lasers, we can scan a structure that is known the hyperfine structure. And that gives us information on the nuclear charge radius. And that is what we were after in this experiment. In nuclear physics, um, the goal is to understand how the protons and the neutrons uh, are, are binding together to form isotopes, because they are the building blocks of our, uh, everything in the nature. And this is very strongly linked to understanding how elements are made in the stars, and in the particular the heavy elements. Nuclear models are being developed to make predictions about these exotic isotopes that we cannot produce here in our laboratories. And we do our experiment to test these nuclear models, but also to help refine them. The result we got, of course, is just one little piece and a big puzzle. So in itself, it's, it's not that this is now solving a big question. However, it poses questions to us because one of the questions we still have is why do we see a kind of a magic behavior for 32 neutrons in the mass measurements or in the excitations energies of these isotopes and why don't we see that in the radii? We are not yet there to answer all the questions, but we are gradually uh, trying to resolve the puzzle. And I'm sure that by doing more of these types of experiments, and also by collaborating more between theory and experiment, we can exchange our ideas about how uh, matter is made in, and how protons and neutrons are binding in nuclei and we hope that with that we will one day solve the puzzle.